Alrighty, welcome to the step-by-step, -step. and I'm going to show you how to do a couple shots from the scene. Um, first, we're going to get all our footage together, and when you have it all together, you should have something like this. Yeah, action. Okay, now the first shot we're going over is the establishing shot where they both walk up. Now, if I go to full here you can see that he has a bat in this shot and he has a tennis racket and I have both clips here so now he has a tennis racket and he has a bat and the thing is I only had um, one tennis racket at the time and that's that's okay because we're going to put these shots together the second shot we're going to go over is the combination between when he transmutes the tennis racket into the t-ball bat here and that's basically just cutting um, this is the earth wall um, this is the first fireball one here you guys happen to know the airspeed velocity of an African swallow? no? maybe? so we're going to go over each of these shots and we'll start with the first one and they get progressively harder as we go. And so we're going to take this shot, and we have both clips here. And we're going to take these and pre-compose them. Shift Command C. And we're going to call this. Um, let's just do shot one. Open up that comp, and we'll zoom in here. So we got this. Now we want the part where. You have a tennis racket. So we go here and he has a tennis racket and he has a baseball bat. So we don't want this clip. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take the mask tool, and we'll go like that. There we go. We come over to here and he has a tennis racket, but he has a baseball bat. So again, we'll take the mask tool and we'll go like this until they overlap. Now there's a bit of a line here, but that's okay because we're going to hit select these two and hit F. And we're just going to feather these out a bit. Not too much. And we can adjust the mass as needed if it's too much. And you can sort of use this line here in the image as a guide. And that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we have both that, and honestly, that's that's all there is for that shot. Um, and we can now move on to this one of the uh, tennis racket to the baseball bat here. So we'll take both this, take this and this, and we'll um, pre-compose that. Again, Shift Command C, and we'll call this shot two. Okay, open that up. Now this is really simple to do. Um, is what we want. Zoom in here and uh, maybe shrink that. And uh, come over here and bring this in. There's a shortcut to do that, but I don't remember off the top of my head what it is. Okay, so we have this, and we need it to cut right here between the two. First part of this effect is going to be to add the lightning onto the thing that comes with the transmutation. So we'll start here, I think. That's probably a good spot. And we'll create a new layer, Command Y, and we'll call this spot, right? Lightning. Cool. Uh, we'll make it black. I don't think it's really that important, but we'll do that. And then we're going to go lightning. And as you can see, it's an obsolete plugin, but it still works fine for this effect. And then, once here, ah, we did need to make it black, and this is why. We're going to go to here, and we're going to go to Add, so only the lightning is shown. Now we're going to take this, and we'll go to the end here, and we'll take this point and go to the end of it here. Now, it goes over his face, not behind it, but we'll deal with that in a second. For now, let's just make the lightning look interesting. And, uh, yeah, looks fairly good. Maybe we can up the amplitude a bit. Go 
kind of crazy. Yeah, that looks good. Um, but it is obsolete for a reason because it sort of looks cut and pasted on. And the way we're going to fix this is with a plugin called Shine. And if you don't have Trap Code Shine, you can sort of get away with uh, Light Rays, a built in plugin, but we're going to use this. Um, and then set the point here and set the transfer mode to add so the original lightning is seen underneath. Then turn colorize to none so it stays the color of the effect. Um, actually, maybe shift it this way. Okay. We're actually going to take, um, let's close this for a bit, and then we're going to take the light rays down to 1.5. Okay, that's pretty good. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go effect blur. Gaussian blur, maybe make this a uh, 4. Yeah, that looks okay. And that way it sort of doesn't feel so cut and pasted on. And then we may even take this down to say 40 or something. Well, no more than that. 55, I guess. And it, it's just sort of there then. It's not so apparent. Um, so we'll start here, and what we're going to do, we we'll close these off. And then we'll open up lighting and we'll keyframe the start and end points. And we will go here and go U. And then we're just going to go frame by frame here and make sure that the start and end points line up. Okay, once you've gone through and keyframed every frame, you should have something like this. Thing is, it goes in front of him. And this is an easy fix. We're just going to mask the parts out that we want to be in front of it. So we take this clip here. Actually, we'll take both these clips. And we're going to shift command C. And we're going to call this footage to make it one, its own layer. Then we'll duplicate that, bring it up, and enter and type mask so that we don't get confused. And as you can see, all the keyframes here, and I've cut the layer to start and end because I don't want the lightning to appear anywhere else, and this is a quick fix to that. And I'm going to just simply start masking him out. And now, just move, and I know this may suck, but just go frame by frame here and cut these out. Once you've done that, and you've gone frame by frame here, just sort of, you know, you don't have to get him cut out every time. Just cut out the parts that you feel you need to, and that'll make the process much simpler. Okay. So we have this, but what we have is a problem here when we go like this. Which we could probably we open this up. This transition works for him, but doesn't work for the background. And the trick to this is we're going to rotoscope him and this out so that the background stays the same, but he can change all day long. And that's simply double clicking, taking the rotoscope up here or hitting option Y and just drawing over him and the bat. And make sure you don't select anything else. Make sure you get his hair too. That would be important. Okay. Awesome look. <laughs> okay, okay. Alright, and then just basically go frame by frame here. Just make sure that you have these things selected. We only have a couple frames to deal with, as you can see, so this is a fairly fast way to do it. When you're done and you have all your footage, you're going to hit here and hit freeze.
Cool. Now I have all this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the footage here. And then you can see as it gets cut out. Hold on. I'm in composition footage. And, it, and it's cut out here. And that's okay. Because what we're going to do is we're going to add back in the background of this. The trick to doing this is first we have to get the background by itself. Okay, what we need to do is we need to make a clean plate of the background of this clip. So we're going to go to the project here, go to footage, and we're going to find this clip 7083. Go 70. And three, and we're going to bring this into here. Now this is fine. And we drag to the beginning of the footage where he's standing on this side, and we have all this over here that's clean. So we're gonna go like this, cut this out, and we may actually go none for a second, um, just so. So that's what I thought. Go in the V. Selection tool and just drag it to the point where he's not in the picture. So we just have this part. I'm going to go and we're actually going to call this clean weight. And we're going to drag that below. Solo it. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer. Um, and the reason for this has been is I'm going to go M. And uh, this is on none. We'll add this back in. But we'll close it up for now. So we clean play two, and what we need is the other side of the frame where he's not standing on. So let's scrub through the footage till we find a point where he's fairly off. Let's go to this one. Because we have this clean plate, and what we're actually going to do is we're going to go and double select on this, and let's give it a bit more room. Actually, let's go like this. We're going to go none, and I need a part where he's a little bit more over. So, let's scrub through the footage. I believe there's a point there where we have more room to work. And then we can bring this all the way over. That's going to be in there, but we'll overlay that with another clip, which is this one. So, we come to here. And I'm going to scrub through the footage until he's practically. Mm, I think we can get away with this. I'm going to select it, and then we bring it all the way over, and we have this. Alright, so if I go back to add, and then add, actually, let's do this. Subtract. There we go. And now we have a clean plate, but, alright, let's go back to a part where, there. I'm going to come here and then go time freeze frame and uh, time freeze frame. We'll go back to the comp here, close uh, these off. Okay, so we have this and uh, we're going to keep this as is. And what we'll do is we'll pre compose this as a clean plate. There, now we only have to worry about one layer. So we come here and we have this clip. Turn these on. Can't get rid of this all well. And come to here. And now he has the exact same background. And there's some movement due to wind, but it will be okay, I think, with the lightning and all that. But what we have is it's just too sharp here. And we're going to take this, and here is to take the roto brush and go to refine matte. And then it'll add some motion blur, and it looks a bit weird now, but um, we can go to, you know, fiddle around with these. You can sort of go into here really see how that works. No. Hmm. 
And then, we, and then we get this, and this this is fairly good. You know, it'll fly for the short part that it's on frame. So we jump back over into shot two, and uh, this is, I think, what we're going for. So once we have that, we need to do the tennis ball right about, I think, here. No see-through, but it's fine for now. So we're going to find the clip of the tennis ball. So we've brought in this clip into the preview here, and what we want is this frame of the tennis ball. So we're going to take this and drag this into here, scrub through it till we find the frame. That's, that's good. And then basically just take the ellipse tool Maybe make this none so we can see what we're doing. Maybe turn to add. And then it's a little sharp, so let's add a blur of, say, three. And I think that's fairly good. Maybe. MM to bring up the mass properties, maybe make a negative one. So let's try a negative two. We'll sort of get rid of that outer edge. Okay, so we have this, and we're going to go time freeze frame, because I don't want it moving them out. I just want this freeze frame. Get rid of the mass, and let's scale it down to the appropriate size. It seems about good. And then we're just going to bring up the position and keyframe it as needed. We will zoom out here and put it here so it connects with this. Go back before the hit here and drag it back so that it moves accordingly. Now what we may do is shift S to bring up the scale along with the position. Hit that. Drag that out and then just bring up the scale a little bit so it looks like it's you know going off into the distance and then once it hits here hit shift command D to cut the layer go over here and repeat that shift command D oh I'm sorry click on the layer shift command D cut it and then we just have this part and when it hits it disappears and the reason we don't have to animate it going off is because just from the sound of it hitting, your brain will make you think that he hit it, and that's all we have to do. If you want to animate the rest, you can, but it's not necessary. To complete this, we're going to add motion blur to everything. Um, probably don't need it on everything. We add motion blur to the tennis ball shot, um, which it didn't, and then turn on motion blur for the comp should have something like this. Okay, add the proper sound in, and you're good to go. Okay, so let's jump back over to the tutorial call. And we have this next shot here of the Earth wave. So this is going to take a bit. So we're going to hit Shift-Command-C, pre-compose this into a shot three. Jump into here. Okay. So a lot of things are going on in this. And the first thing we need to do is make the lightning for his hands that appear when he claps it. So we start with the first frame of clapping, which is this one. And we're going to repeat what we did before. And this is Command Y, call lightning over here, type in lightning, take the obsolete, not the advanced lightning, drag it into here, toggle switches, and make this add, and then just drag these points to each frame, so we'll start here, and uh, here, maybe play with the amplitude a bit, 
and the detail and do maybe make these segments uh, let's not make it too crazy that looks kinda cool we'll do that and then shift command D go in here and then we're gonna go all the way to say a little past where he hits the ground so two three four five five frames past where he touches the ground shift D and that will be our area so we'll start from the beginning go up to here and then we want keyframe to start endpoints not the segments and uh, just go frame by frame Okay, once you're done, it should look something like this. And action! Yeah! Okay. Now again, we need to mask out the parts that we don't want it to be in front of. So we're simply going to take this, hit G, and just mask out all these parts here. And create a separate mask for each hand. Now you have all your masks and uh, I made a mistake here. We're in the masks don't seem to work on the shape layer when it is in add mode. I'm not entirely sure why that is but they don't work. So we're going to hit this and we're going to command copy Get rid of these, and we're going to take this, and we're going to shift, command, C, and we'll just call this lighting comp, move all attributes, okay, and then we're going to command, paste, and now, it'll be like this, that's okay, we're going to go into here, and we're going to hit subtract, and then add, and this should create the the um, mass that we want and we can go into here and we can feather this down to you know three because I think the final feather I had was a little bit ridiculous and then fix as you know as needed okay now we're gonna go back over to here and get shine again and drop that on this and we'll put the source no, here transfer mode add this length 1.5 and colorize none but the oh sorry 1.5 not 15 now the difference between this and the previous shot is um, we to go to the beginning here, where it appears, and let's turn that off. We're going to keyframe this source point. We're going to start with the rays pointing up, and then by the end, I don't want the rays pointing through the ground here, so we're going to go like this, and we're going to make it parallel so they sort of line up with the ground. And then we're going to go blur and find a Gaussian blur and drop that on here and make that 4.4. And yeah, that's good. Okay, so we have this. Now what we don't have is um, we're going to go down here to where he's about to touch the ground. And this is a lot of light coming from it, but there's nothing affecting the environment from said light. So we're going to do a quick solution. Come to about... This point is good. And we're going to go Command Y to make a new solid. And we'll call this Light. And then let's make it sort of a bluish thing. That's okay. Um, turn that off for now. I'm going to create an elliptical mask just real fast, uh, not a shape layer, let's not do that. Select it and then create an elliptical mask. And uh, sort of just make this 
the right size that you think it should be. So we have this light, and then we'll turn this back on, and we're going to go F, and feather this out a lot, and T, and lower this a lot. So it's just this little thing here. And go to where it touches the ground, and maybe add a little mask over the hands. Okay, so we have this, and then we'll possibly make these F3, so it blurs it a little bit. Now that we have this, we're going to keyframe the mask path of these two. So at this point, just adjust, you know, it, it doesn't just eyeball it because at this point it's beyond the layer of the circle and we can just push this over here. And there, we have that. But what we need to do is we need to get rid of the circle when it gets too far. So we'll go to T, keeping the opacity, and then as it gets, say, up here, make this zero. And then we just have the light come on. Alrighty. Okay, we come in here and we type in ground crack. I've already done it, but I'm going to do it for the sake of the tutorial. And the first one here, which if I double click, looks like this. I'm going to bring this in to the clip, set it to hard light. You can set it to overlay, but I find hard light to be a little bit nicer. And come down here and we actually bring this below the lighting comp. And. We're going to hit scale and uh, scale that down. And you see this sort of whitish thing that's going on here, and that may be from the scale, but that's fine. I'm going to take this mask, I'm going to go like this with it. Just so we get the area that we want. And then we're going to go M here. Maybe take these masks and uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, and then like the light before, which isn't perfect here, um, and you can adjust that if we need to. We're going to mask out the hands so the cracks don't appear over that. And we have this, um, let's hit F, maybe feather these out for three, three, three. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. And then we need it to appear. So one, two, go, like here's where it touches, and that's good. One, two, three. Uh, we'll start here. And we'll go one, two, three, and we're going to go M and keyframe the mass path. And go one, two, three, and then take this, and we're just going to scale it all the way down. I'm sorry. It's like the first mask here, and just scale it all the way down, and then drag it in the center here. Command Shift D. Cool. So now it will uh, appear. And for stuff like this, we can go F and sort of feather out the ground here so it's not a direct circle cut. And that's looking good. So we're going to start actually making the wall. And I've taken pictures here and brought it up. And what we have are these clips I took of the ground for the place I was at. Oh, look, my foot. Can't use that one. And that's a big rock. So we're going to use uh, this one right here with the cracks, and we'll bring um, this in. We'll drop it over the light here, and then we're going to scale it down. It's about the size that we want. We will make this a 3D layer, 
And we hit W for rotate. And uh, actually, we can bring the scale up a bit. There we go, so it's not upside down. And rotate it on the Y axis, because it should be you know, parallel with him facing the camera. And then we'll possibly scale it up a bit. Ooh, scale, sorry, not position. And then we're going to mask out some of this stuff that we don't want. And we take this rectangle tool, and it will run parallel with the object. So just just this part. And we'll, you know, take this tool. Let's actually move the center point to the center of the object now. And uh, scale it up a bit more. You know, and then move it as necessary. I think when we look at it, a little bit taller than him. That's okay. Um, but we now, you know, you can obviously see it doesn't match the ground here. So we're going to go like this. I'm going to select this. I'm going to create a layer down here that just, just encompasses this bottom part. And then we're going to hit subtract and just feather that out a lot. And, you know, it, it's sort of artificial the way it blends, but we'll be fixing that by adding some elements. So for now, that is good. And what we're actually going to do is then we're going to take this layer again. So uh, bring this down. You know, again, scale it down. Make it a three-dimensional layer. And sort of move it around in three-dimensional space. And you can see it interacting with this layer here, and that's good. And what we'll do to add some variety is we'll rotate it on the z-axis so it's vertical. And then move it accordingly. So we'll orientation will be negative 90. Um, um, Two seventy. Turn that a little bit more facing the camera here. And what we want to do is line up this crack with this one, so it looks like it's wrapping around. Um, maybe scale it up a bit. I'm sorry. Transient. Um, scale it till we get right where we want. And I, I think that's good. And then sort of create a mask around the parts that we want. Don't want the wall to be too thick, so we'll just create this little indent here. And that's okay. We can sort of, you know, turn this off so we can see better. And sort of move it around so it matches the height. It doesn't overlap with the other objects. Okay, that's good for now. Then we, we're going to add a top layer. So for now, let's, let's take this position and we'll go back to the part where he first touches the ground. So say this, and we'll go one, two, three, and we'll make it start three layers after he touches the ground. And we'll go position, keyframe the position, and go one, two, three. It's going to take three layers to rise. We'll go like that. One, two, three. And we're going to sort of move down in position till it is supposedly under the ground. And we'll adjust the mass as we go. So then we can go back to this point and hit M. You know, and this is, if we turn this on, you can see this, so we're going to keyframe the mass paths of these. Hit U to bring up all keyframes, and then go back here to this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the masks. So this mask right here, I'm oh, sorry, just select this second one and move it up so it's still subtracting the layer. And then... 
So once we have this, we're going to go to the top here. I'm going to create another mask for the subtractive part. So we're going to repeat the effect we did here, feather this out to say 100, and uh, maybe move this accordingly. So we only want to start feathering it here. Actually, let's let's zoom in here. And then we'll possibly drag this way out so that we have room to work with this. So then you will have something like this. And this is fine, but what we need is the top of it, which should appear here. So we're going to bring in a new layer. We'll go with uh, the one that doesn't have my foot in it. So we have this, and we're going to scale this, uh, scale this down. Cool. And of course, make it three-dimensional. W to rotate it in 3D space. And you can sort of see if you zoom in here, how you're aligning with the layer. So if we hit W, it's pretty even cut. So then we just move it, whoops, just move it up here. Should be fairly good. Then go here, create a mask. It feels like it works. You can sort of cheat the mask by adjusting it Accordingly, you know that's that's not perfect, but that gets us in the ballpark. And what we the trick we're going to use here is this is only really in one frame because then it comes up to this point. So we go here, and we don't really need to worry about that much. But all this is sort of a lot to deal with now. So we have this, and we need to make each part of the wall sort of feel like it matches the shadows. So we'll take this back, you know, we'll take this part here, and we're going to go right-click, Layer Styles, Gradient Overlay. And the reason we're going to do this instead of a ramp is because it gives us more options to work with. I'm going to go Edit Gradient, and uh, White to Black, that's really good. We'll adjust the angle so that the white part, if done right, is coming from this sort of angle and the shadows over here. Then we're going to go blending mode, overlay, and then adjust the opacity so that it's not too much. And the reason we do this is because of the overlay. A lot of player, um, Possibly play with the scale a bit. A little bit more. Maybe take it so it's not so white, per se. And that looks okay. Because we're going to go right click, layer styles, color overlay. I'm going to change this to sort of a dark gray. I'm going to change this to overlay. And then as we go, we can make it, you know, darker until it aligns with a little bit darker than that one. I think I think we're we're sort of good here. Now the problem that arises when you do this is that it becomes really apparent, you know, all this. So you kind of have to go through again and just really, really make sure you know. You're doing. Okay, now this this gets us, you know, but what we have here is that this layer now doesn't match. So again, we go layer styles, gradient overlay, gradient overlay, and we sort of, you know, adjust the angle so that it's the opposite of this. And uh, I think that's good. We want the white over here and the black over here. 
set this to overlay and then lower the opacity so that it matches and uh, maybe up it a little bit more no, that's too much it's okay and then edit the gradient so that it's not exactly white per se but just a just a gray so we're not getting too blinding light from that angle Cool. Then we're going to take all this, pre-compose it into move all attributes, and we'll call this wall. And that way we can edit the color for this thing as a whole. So we're back here, and the wall, the dark parts of the wall don't really match it because it's sort of a flat thing here, and the texture is a bit too rough. But that's okay. We're going to go effect, color correction, uh, tint first of all. Um, then we'll lower the tint. Just, just so it's sort of diluted to match the concrete color um, that it originally had. It's going to go effect, color correction, curves. We take this and we're just going to lighten it up a bit so that it, you know, matches everything. We have this. We're going to go effect, blur, Gaussian blur, and maybe just make this a uh, 1.1 1 .1 or something. Just, just so it isn't so sharp here. Up the tint a bit. Just to fiddle around with the uh, curves here. And then we need to bring in the dust elements that will hide this. Okay, we have to get the dust elements to hide this edge here and we're going to type in dust and we want the dust wave from copilot's action essentials so we're going to take in dust wave one through three and bring that here over the wall layer and we'll just work on each one individually so we have this one now we'll scroll through it to the part we want. So let's go to the beginning. Um, we go to the first frame that this wall is on. And then turn on the dust wave and we sort of adjust the dust wave so that it comes out. Say a frame before. Not like that. That's that's probably good. We can sort of move it down here, and then it'll start. We can start here, and then go out as needed. But we're gonna take this and go um, scale, maybe scale it up a bit, and then uh, go here and go effect, color correction, tint, and then maybe pull that tint back just a hair. So we want them sort of whitish with a little bit of brown. Toggle switches and we'll go to add. And it will maybe make it bright enough to cover that up. And we'll take these two and we'll do the same. Okay, and this should, as we come out here, now what you'll see is it starts to brighten up the edge. And this is a simple fix. We simply just go over the parts that we want. Not with a shape layer. Go over the parts that we want here. Say, uh, this is good. And then hit F and just feather it out a bunch. Hmm, that should fix that. On to the second clip. This is much easier to do as we simply drag it under here and adjust the timing as follows. When we start here, then it should be good. And we're going to come here, we're going to copy this tint, and we'll actually just paste it to these two layers. Turn this layer back on, and we have a more predominant wave. And now on to the third layer. 
But when you come down and you know, again drag it as follows, and it'll start to make that again. So just select the parts that we want, hit F, feather it out, and then uh, you should be good to go. Maybe adjust so that it's not exactly in line with it. And then maybe move it over here a bit. Drag it so that when you come to this part, it's just sort of appearing. And then when we turn them all on, you should get something like that. But this is all way too bright. So I'm going to go T and make this 45. And that's good. Now this doesn't cover it up perfectly, and that's where this is going to come in. We type in um, concrete. Actually, we go into action essentials here. I'm going to go into debris and we want this cement collapse here. And I'm going to bring this in. And as we drag it out, you can see that it's a already precomposed cement block. And we're just going to drag it out until we get a nice part, say right there. You know, and then scale this up a bunch. maybe make it three-dimensional layer and just do that a bit to sort of skew it so it lines up with the wall go back to the beginning here and we're going to mask this out so this doesn't go beyond the wall Hit M, make a subtractive layer, hit F, feather that out a bunch, and then we're going to go effect, color correction, curves, Let's brighten up a bit, um, just a little bit, and then we'll go effect color correction, hue and saturation, and bring up the master lightness a lot. I think I think we're looking good with that. Of course, make sure that it appears right there. It does this. And this is generally the effect we're going for. The only issue now is the fact that this wall isn't casting any shadow on the things behind it. So we'll go to here and we're going to go Command Y and call this shadow. Make it a black layer. And go OK. Turn it off for now. We're going to draw a mask around where it should say make a shadow. Turn it back on. And uh, maybe go F, feather that out a bit, T, lower the opacity, and drop this behind the wall. And uh, let's, let's bring that feathering down so it lines up with this. Um, But what you'll notice, if we bring that feather to just say six, turn this off, and uh, actually let's let's come in here, try and match the shadow with this shadow. So we'll bring it just to a two, and if you'll notice, there's actually a little bit of blue in this shadow. So we'll come into the blue layer here. And uh, 
Just get rid of Puncher Blue. I think that's good. And then we are going to mask the parts that shouldn't be covered in shadow because this is just for the ground layer. So we're going to come in here. Boom. Okay, make this subtractive. And then, of course, throw this out. Maybe go MM and bring it in a little bit. Experiment to get it right where you right where you want it. I think I think that'll work. Then we're going to go M. Go to mask path. Go to fit here, and then we're going to you know, come down. So if this is the first layer that it's on top. Drag these keyframes over. Go all the way down to the. There, that's where we want it. Double click, and uh, maybe go like this, select these two, and just sort of bring this in. So that as we go, it sort of grows out. And then, of course, when Shift D, it disappears when we get to here. But we also need a shadow casting over him, as this is just for the ground. So we're going to duplicate this layer, take this, and hit, oh, I'm sorry, hit M, remove these masks, and then we're just going to draw over him. So once you have that done, we're going to take this and hit F and uh, just, just feather this out enough that it looks like it should work. And we're actually going to call this Shadow 2 so that it's a separate thing. And uh, hit Fit. We're all good here. But what we need to do is have this reveal. Now we could keyframe the mask. But, an easier way to do this, let's actually keyframe this mask path just a little bit so that these are at least bright. Okay, now that you know your steps in the ballpark, what we're going to do is we're going to go Effect, I'm sorry, select it, go Effect, Transition, um, Linear Wipe. And then we're going to do Transition Completion, and as you can see, it sort of transitions it on, you know, a linear level, but we don't want it here, we want it at zero. And then just the, I'm sorry, we want it at 180 so that it transitions up or down, however you want to think about that. And we're going to start with it, the shadow completely there. And as we go through it, we're going to bring the shadow way down and then feather this way out so we have this happening. And then possibly bring the shadow into a darken mode so that it affects the pixels there. And then as it gets lower, it disappears. And that's pretty much that effect. I know you can fiddle around with the rubble and stuff. Like here, you might want to make the mask a little bit wider so that it doesn't have stuff like that happening. Um, but generally speaking, that's that's what we're going for here. You know, just just play around with that stuff like fixing this mask here to get that to work. 
And uh, I think we're good to go on that shot. So we can jump back over here. Move on to the shot of the fireball. Shift Command C, pre composes, move all attributes, not like they're much, not like there are much. We call this shot four. Uh, let's not capitalize that. Drop in here, and we have this. Sort of zoom in because it's only a couple of frames. And, uh, project. I'm going to go to. Okay, for this shot. We have a lot going on with different fire elements and smoke and some light. The first thing to do is to actually make the lighter lit as it comes around. And this is simply from the torch section of fire in Action Essentials. So we go to Torch Windy, I believe that's uh, what I used. And uh, we select Torch Windy 2, this one. Bring it in and make it an additive layer. Then, I'm going to scale this down. Um, much smaller than that. And then, we're just going to keyframe it to line up with the lighter. So we're going to go position here, and just make sure it follows the lighter the entire way. Once we have this part, we need to make the lighter actually light up the hand here because it should be creating a light source. So we're going to hit Command Y and call this light. Make it say an orangish solid. Go OK. Turn that off for now. So we're just going to mask out the part of the hand that we actually want to get lit by the light. You just sort of need to eyeball it because when you feather it out it'll do that for you. It doesn't have to be exact. Turn that back on. Again, feather this all out. Change this maybe to an uh, yeah, an additive layer. And we'll lower the opacity. And there, it's sort of you can see it's lit up by the light here. And we're going to go M and keyframe the mask so that it follows it. This one. Once we've done that, and we have this sort of effect, and I think that works good, but honestly, I would like to go T, opacity, and make this zero, or one, zero, okay, zero. Okay, and uh, it's just not nearly as strong as we come out. Then what we're going to go into here and add some motion blur into that so that it just flows with the image and doesn't feel so dropped on. Then what we need to do is as he fires away with the fireball, which we can cue about here with a little bit of the clip left, I want to have these sparks sort of flying, you know, in reverse that suck into the fireball to show that there's, you know, all the energy is going into the little light here. So we'll call sparks. And what we're looking for is called slow sparks here. And we'll get the two. And we'll drop this in, close all these off. And uh, drag that over until we find a good spot that we like. Say so that that's fairly good. And we'll make it this an additive layer. Drag it over and we're going to mask out the parts that we actually want seen. And of course feather this out a bit. Now what we're going to have is Command Shift D, cut it, and then this part we're going to go time, 
time reverse layer. So I'm going to move it until the sparks are here. And then we're going to go position, keyframe the position, and move it so that it stays with the lighter. So we have this, and it sort of flows with the clip. And then we're going to, of course, turn on motion blur. Now at this point, we want the fire to grow bigger. So we're going to go into torch, and we're going to find this torch turbulent file. We bring this down, and actually let's bring it below the sparks file. Again, make it an additive, sorry, an additive layer. And then add some motion blur. I'm going to go into here, and we want this fire to sort of explode around his hand at this point. I'm going to go frame by frame here and just make sure that it stays on his hand. I'm going to sort of keyframe the position and just make sure that it wraps around his hand as it's sort of burning it from the fireball. And you should have something like this where the sparks go in and then out for the fireball. Now let's take the this and make it here and then go to the torch and it should go away because of the giant fire that's going to come out of that and to do that we're going to go explosion find a fireball at cam i'm going to use number seven here we'll come down below the actually we'll come in front of the sparks because it's going to encompass everything Go to the very beginning of the clip. It's just starting to form here, and we're going to make this an additive layer. Bring it down. Put it off so that it appears right when all the sparks come together. And then as it grows, we're going to sort of keyframe it. So starting from the very beginning, I'm going to go P, Shift, S. We have all this. Go to the end here. And bring up the scale. And the position is going to go out here. And possibly, you know, position down a bit. So that we don't have to worry about cutting off the bottom. And then we'll add some motion blur to that. And that's looking pretty sweet as is. Okay. <laughs> Enough of watching that. What we need to do now is all of a sudden the light from the hand works, but we have a much larger fire that should light up more of it. So we're going to need to create a second light to accommodate the light coming off this. So we're going to go layer, new, solid, same thing, same color. So we're going to go light two, drag this down, and mask out the parts that would be affected by it, which are pretty much just this. So we have this on his face here, and we're going to go add, feather it out a lot, and bring the opacity way down. And then we're going to keyframe the opacity from 60 here. back down to zero.
and then all the way to the last frame where it's not completely gone due to it being blurred so much we don't really need to worry about the mask not being exact it sort of works for what we need and you could go with this but the main thing to compositing fire is the smoke so we come into here and we're going to go over here I'm going to go to smoke Bring something called Puffy Smoke 2, and we'll bring this down under all the fire elements. And this is sort of a blue smoke element here. And if I solo it, you can see it better. So come to, say, here. Turn that back on. And what we're going to do is we're going to go Effect color correction tint to make it white and then we're going to go effect color correction curves and just drag it down to make it just black but it's sort of translucent so what we're going to do is we're going to pre-compose it into a smoke comp move all attributes okay open this up and duplicate it five times and then we have this black smoke that we can work with and we're going to mask out the bottom here mm -hmm. and then the mask expansion in And that will get rid of that. Alrighty, so we have this. I'm going to drop it in over the main part of the fire. And look how good that looks already. But, we gotta go to the part where the fire is big, which is here. And we're going to start small. So about this point, let me go here. So I'm going to bring up the <clears throat> scale, S for scale, and position. Turn that on. And then go back a layer. And um, scale that down a bit. One more. So you can see it start to form. And really bring it down for this one. And what we're going to do here, we're going to go to this point. And we're also going to get Shift T to bring up the opacity. And then go back down to here. Bring the opacity to practically zero. Or 50, actually, 50%. I'm sorry, not zero. Alrighty. And then that appears, but it needs to suddenly get bigger. So we're going to scale it up a bunch. And then move it over. I'm just making sure it's a little bit behind the fire as we go. So then, you should end up with something like this. Action! Action! That's all there really is to that. 